Hey guys, welcome back to the Grafana series. Now that we know how to create dashboards in Grafana, what if there is a way to add filters to these dashboards? For example, I want to add a drop down to this dashboard listing all my pods so that I can see the CPU usage of my desired pod instead of this hard coded pod. For this, Grafana supports dynamic dashboards with the concept of variables. In this chapter, let's explore how to build interactive dashboards that can adapt to user inputs, time ranges and various data sources allowing users to explore data more effectively. So without any further delay, let's get started. To add filters to this dashboard we have created, let's go to the settings page of the dashboard and navigate to the variable section. Here let's add a variable. This variable can be of many types like query, custom, data source etc. For the demo purpose, let's select the query type which shows as a drop down filter and the values will be fetched from a data source query. Let's give the name as pod and we can give the label and description which are optional. And now let's select the data source as Prometheus and now we should give the query and this query can be of different types. Let's select the classic query where we can give the promql. This promql retrieves all distinct values for the label pod from the queue pod info metric. Let's scroll down and we can run the query to test it. As you can see, these are all the pods in our cluster. So let's apply. Now the first variable of our dashboard is created. Let's save the dashboard. Add it or filter. Save it. Now let's return to our dashboard and take a look. As you can see, we now have a filter displaying all the pods in our Kubernetes cluster. However, when we select a pod, nothing changes in our dashboard because we have hard coded our pod name in this promql so we should replace this hard coded value with the selected pod using the variable name to refer our variable in this promql all we need to do is dollar pod and let's run the query as you can see the value is changed here let's apply now let's change the pod value as you can see based on the pod that we select the data is changing accordingly now let's select this prometheus server and see as you can see the CP usage is showing as no data but actually the Prometheus server pod is consuming the CP usage. Why are we getting this wrong result? If we go to the query, here the namespace is hard coded as to do but Prometheus server does not exist in the to do namespace. It is in the monitoring namespace. So instead of hard coding this value, we should replace this value also with a variable. For that, let's go back to the settings of the dashboard and go to variables and create a new variable. Let's give the variable name as namespace and the select query type as the classic query and give this promql which gets the all distinct namespaces and run query to test it. As you can see there are three namespaces here. Let's save the dashboard, add it namespace variable. Now let's go back to our dashboard and as you can see there is a namespace here. So now let's go back to the CPU usage query and updated this hard coded value with the variable namespace. Let's run the query now. As you can see, now we are getting the data. So let's apply. And now, if we select the to do namespace and the to do pod, the CPU usage will be shown accordingly. Awesome. But in real world scenarios, there may be thousands of pods making it difficult to filter through such a large list of pods. And also, it's difficult to know which pod is in the which namespace. To solve this issue, what if we filter these pods based on the namespace that we select here? To do that, let's go to settings page, variable and let's move this namespace to the top and in the pod section, let's edit the query such that it filters the pods based on the namespace that we select. To do that, all we need to do is add a filter here, namespace is equal to dollar namespace. If you're confused about this query, I highly recommend you to watch PromQL chapter of the Prometheus series. Now let's go back to our dashboard. Now if we select the monitoring namespace, I will see the pods which are running only in the monitoring namespace. And if I select the to do namespace, I will see the pods that are running only in the to do namespace. This way we can filter a variable based on another variable. So if we select this to do API, the data will be changing accordingly. Also in the real time, we will be having multiple data sources. So to add a data source filter to the dashboard, let's go back to variables again and add a new variable. And now let's select the type as data source and let's give the name as data source. Here in the type, we should select the type of the data source we are working with. 
So let's select the Prometheus, apply. Let's move it to the top and save the dashboard as added data source filter. Save it. Now let's go back to the dashboard. As you can see, you can see the data source filter. To use this data source in our panel, let's go back to edit. And here, instead of hard coding this Prometheus, we should select this data source variable. Apply. As you can see, based on the data source that we select, the data will be changed accordingly. As a homework, you can add another Prometheus instance and play with it. Also, as a homework, I want you to update this PromQL to remove all the hard coded values and replace them with the variables. Also, if you look at this variable, this interval is hard coded. To replace this, we don't need to create another template variable. For these purposes, Grafana by default provides some global variables. These variables can be used across multiple dashboards, making them dynamic and reusable. One such example is dollar underscore underscore interval. Grafana automatically calculates that interval variable based on the selected time range of the dashboard and the width of the graph. If the time range is too short, example last 15 minutes, the interval might be something like 30 seconds or 1 minute. If the time range is longer, example last 7 days, it might adjust to 10 minutes or 1 hour to keep the graph readable. Grafana also has different other global variables. You can go through the documentation to understand more about them. So this way, by creating dynamic Grafana dashboards, we can visualize data in real time and offer an interactive experience for users. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed it and learned something new. In the next chapter, we will see how to set up alerts in Grafana. Stay tuned. My name is Pavanil Tepu and I thank you very much for watching this video. If you like the content, please share it with your friends and do not forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any updates.